God of power and mercy, open our hearts in welcome, remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy, so that we may share his wisdom, become one with him when he comes in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be with you today. I have to get my imagination working to see what you would be sitting in the church, but we know you're there. And the one thing that we do know is that the Spirit has joined us together where we're actually here or at home or wherever we are. Uh, the Spirit makes us one, which gives us the understanding and the help that we're not alone. Today, we again celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. We continue our our Advent journey in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with each of you. Amen. Amen. Remembering that from time to time we have failed and not always responded to the graces offered to us by the Lord, we ask for healing and forgiveness as we pray. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of the heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds 
his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening com coming day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted in fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells, Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Jordan countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him at the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his saddles. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. The prophet Isaiah uh, leaves us such wonderful reflections of his encounter with God and what he has placed in writing for us to share this morning again, or this afternoon we have from the 40th chapter, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. So sometimes as we get all of this, we have to take a piece here and a piece there to otherwise we get indigestion. Can't, we can't swallow it all, but first of all, the first line that says, comfort and give comfort to my people, says your God. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wastelands a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made plain, the rough country a broad valley. As then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Just imagine, just try to capture that in, in your memory to sort of set the tone. It's, it's, it's filled with excitement and difference and challenge it's in the desert place that we're called to find God. We live in a desert place, how fortunate we are that we don't have to go very far to hear Isaiah speaking in our, in our minds about going to the desert to pray. What is it about the mountain? We can stand there in awe as we look at the size of them and the, and the shape of them worn by the weather, the color of them, the light shining on them, whatever time it might be of the day or night. And we can stand there in awe for a very long time with our mouths open, looking at the beautiful hills and the mountains and the crevices and the rocks. It's in that environment that we're called we are called to, in the desert, to prepare the way of the Lord. We have to give accountability for where we are. At the we live in the desert. This is where we're meant to be. These are the wonderful things I always say. We are meant to be in the desert, and we are to uh, uh, reap the fruits of being in the desert. It's there where we see ourselves as we are, and sometimes we don't like what we see, but there it is. So we go to that place, a sacred place, to uh, prepare a special place during this, this time of Advent. Advent, we're preparing for the coming of the Son of God. And in time and age like this, we, these readings are so appropriate to us. About God, we're asking God to comfort us to speak gent gently and tenderly to us, to help us 
see the way he's leading us to live. Near the end of that reading, uh, Isaiah says, go up onto the high mountain, cry out the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. He comes here with power. He rules with a strong arm. He is his reward with him, his recompense before him. And here, this is something just to, again, of all of these sections, just think of this. In the times of, we're in difficult times. No matter where you look, there's something that's on our head or disturbs us, so forth and so on. And we do have our faith, and we do have the promises of Jesus, but sometimes we have to let those promises sort of activate in our lives so that we can be encouraged from the word of God. And here we have the last little phrase. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. It's interesting because uh, we read the story of the Good Shepherd. Uh, the sheep, all the sheep don't obey the shepherd from time to time. Hester goes after them. And, but he goes after them, that's the point. He leaves the 99 and goes out to search the one who was lost. It's the same with us. Whether we see ourselves the 99 or the one who is strayed a little bit, the Lord is there to care for us, whether it be the one or the many because he loves us and he cares for us. And we remind him that a shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. So again, we come to the second Sunday of Advent when we again are, are focusing on the great gift of Jesus to us through word and sacrament, especially the Eucharist, that he loves us and cares for us and carries us in his arms. And sometimes he might even have to tap us on the head to shape us up a little bit. That's possible too, because shepherds do the same thing to those who don't behave themselves. They get the, the stick and give them a little crack a little bit, and, and they go. And sometimes we have to do that ourselves. But my point is take the time that we have with the scriptures feeding our minds and ask yourself, how does God comfort me? Where do I find him at my best that he's always there? Do I really believe how powerfully he loves me? Do I really believe that as a shepherd he is there to care for me and guide me and carry to safety? Those are little reflections I think are worthwhile this week to help us prepare for the great celebration of Christmas. Where there before our eyes we see the, the marvel of the incarnation of Jesus Christ and his mother Mary and his stepfather Joseph. Our profession of faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, and maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, let us pray now for the needs of our world and our community.
For men and women of power who shape the future of the world, may the Spirit fill them with the gifts Isaiah foretold, wisdom, insight, courage, right judgment, love of God, and reverence for life. We pray to the Lord. That all mankind may learn to judge, not only with their eyes and ears, but with their hearts as well, to ensure true justice. And that we all constantly search for new and more effective ways to carry on Christ's work of reconciliation among all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, may we accept one another as God has accepted us and so be a sign for all the world of Christ's continued presence in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the safety of all our health care workers, service men and women, and for all police and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For comfort and healing for the sick in our community, for strength for those who care for them, a quick end to the pandemic, and for wisdom for those making decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For today's Mass intentions, for the repose of the soul of Rudy Schwartner, Amy O'Brien, Margaret Trujillo, Maxine Trujillo, Donald McClellan, Frank Morton, Robert Ouellette, Gary Herrera, and the repose of the souls of those who have passed away due to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the silent intentions of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray through the intercession of our Blessed Mother that as protectress of our country and land, she will look over us, reach out to us with love as her son has told us to do, that those who are sick and have no place to live, those who are sick and will die in our streets, those who will die without anyone to comfort them, and for those who can't try to care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, help us this Advent to acknowledge our failings and grow in love for you and others that Christ may be born again in this world through our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. Accept the sacrifice for your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always 
and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, who he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, John the 23rd, our holy patron, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. that Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
and we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. How happy we are to be called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads as we ask for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith, in the first coming of the His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Nice to be with you folks at home. We're still looking for the day we see you here, but keep praying for that. And have a nice day, and remember God loves you, and so do I. <laughs>